for being here. Um, so it's uh, America's birthday today. Also, it's Mike Higman's birthday. So uh, let's, let's just sing. We can sing for him, right? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mike. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. So, 29? Well, America's 244 today, I think, right? So, uh, so you're looking good for that. If, if that's the, You're not that old. Anyway, happy birthday to Mike. Um, hopefully we know what today is, right? Fourth of July. What do we celebrate? Independence. Freedom, right? Freedom from, from England, mostly. <laughs> that doesn't sit with us so much anymore like it used to. But uh, uh, freedom from England is, is what we celebrate. In particular, uh, 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 we wanted independence from a, uh, a non-representative form of government. It sounds boring, doesn't it? Like, oh, that's, that's not as exciting as freedom. Oh, taxation without representation. Oh, uh, let's have a party. Let's have a tea party, in, pa- in fact, uh, in Boston. Let's destroy them. That's what was going on at the time. We kind of lose some of those things now. Um, but, but that was part of what they were doing at the time. Now, I think independence is a good thing to celebrate uh, no matter what, but especially this season of of time that we're in, uh, the season of life that we're experiencing in our country now. Um, um, uh, Not a lot of patriotism going on. We don't feel very unified. In fact, uh, those of you who are on the the big text that we sent out, I sent out like a thing about um, uh, what's what's your uh, biggest spiritual uh, problem that you're having right now, and somebody said, I just... I just don't feel unified. Like there's just this disjointedness in me. And it's because of what's going on in our country and around us. I have no control over it. And, and so I get that. I, I understand that. So it's, it's kind of hard. So, so we look for independence from those things, independence from uh, uh, that kind of government that, that our, our, our forefathers kind of fought for. Um, but nowadays there's other things, this idea of justice. Um, uh, justice for marginalized people, and uh, uh, there's been uh, riots and protests, demonstrations. We've had some uh, even in our own city, uh, in, in our, around our county. There's been different things like that. But then there's also this idea of liberty uh, happening now, that we can worship freely. Isn't this nice? We can, we can worship wherever we want. Uh, that's part of our independence that we can have. Uh, we can do it however we want in whatever way we want, at least for now. Uh, we can move about the country. Oh, wait. Oh, I, not O-H. I-O. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, wait. We can't exactly move about the country right now. But that feels like an infringement on our liberty, doesn't it? Um, uh, it it's uh, um, uh, this idea of having to wear masks. Isn't that an infringement on our liberty, some people are saying. Like, I don't have to wear a mask, doggone it. Uh, that's against my, my right, my liberty. Uh, we have freedom to make choices. Some of you are eating sandwiches on white bread. Some of you are eating sandwiches on brown bread. You have a choice in that. Amen. You can choose from the value meal or the more expensive meal at the restaurant. And there's all kinds of choice in that. So uh, uh, we're starting, uh, really, I'm going to start the new series today, but this is kind of foundational work for it. Um, and I, I just titled it, with liberty and justice for all. And we know where that comes from, right? The, the Pledge of Allegiance. You remember that? Can you, can you recite it? Do you remember it? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice. Oh, oh, I forgot something. <laughs> Indivisible. Wait, I, I actually wrote it down because I knew I'd forget. No, I didn't write that part in. No wonder. Oh, man. Can we edit the video? The indivisible with liberty and justice for all. But it turns out there's some things that can divide us because we don't have unity on everything because of liberty and justice for all. We're not always united on everything. I think uh, on this series, we're going to discuss liberty and justice for all. Uh, I'm going to have to stay over here, aren't I? It's just 
It's so tempting to go over there. Uh, liberty and justice for all. What does it mean to have liberty for all? And how does that work with our justice for everybody, for all that are in our country? I think there's some bigger ideas uh, uh, about liberty within the context of equality for every person. In other words, everybody's free, or at least that was the idea behind it. Um, but we're going to d- dive into this because um, we also know our history as, as a nation of slavery and uh, are the things that kind of go historically with that uh, uh, history and that, that uh, uh, mark on our, on our ideals as a country. But today I want to talk about the ideal, the ideal of liberty and justice and equality. And so that ideal of liberty is something we've been wrestling with for 244 years now, and actually longer than that because it predates even that while, while uh, uh, they were starting to get the ideas for what it would mean to be independent from England. Um, uh, so it predates that, but we'll go with 244 years. The ideal of liberty is a distinctly Christian ideal. It comes straight from Jesus Christ. And, and, and we have said that we're a Christian nation, right? Like uh, uh, it does say uh, in the pledge, under God. And then it says indivisible, which I forgot. But uh, um, uh, we are under God. I've said recently, even publicly, I don't think we're a Christian nation anymore. Um, but I want to walk that back a little bit. I don't think we're a believing nation anymore. Uh, uh, we're, we don't have a ton of active believing Christians anymore. But our nation is founded on the principles of Jesus Christ. And I want to walk us through that to celebrate America and also celebrate Jesus' impact on our lives and our life as a nation. So, so let's talk about a few of these things. It's a distinctly Christian ideal to have liberty. Um, it, we can do this to see where our foundations are as a Christian nation and to see how we have uh, a, a psyche with Jesus in mind. You know, Jesus is still there. Even if people don't believe in him, we still live out some of his principles. And so we want to celebrate the liberty that we have within Jesus and in the USA today. So I want to think about some cultural differences that we have now that Jesus did not have some of those things in his life and when he was walking this planet and teaching us. The first thing is that slavery was uh, assumed. He lived in an oppressive Roman government, and slavery was just an assumption that would have been a natural thing for them. The entire Roman economy was built on the backs of slaves. But they weren't the first people to use slavery as their economic system, because even the Hebrew people, Jesus' forefathers, like back the patriarchs, you know, back, way back, even they were enslaved by the Egyptians. You remember the story? So this was... uh, 1,200 years before Jesus was around, even the Hebrew people were enslaved. And then God, through Moses, he liberates the people uh, from Egypt. They move to the promised land, right? And then along the way, he actually gives them instructions of how to treat their own slaves. Like, so they were continuing on that thought of slavery, uh, even in the Hebrew people. Slavery was a part of the global system for thousands of years, right up through Roman times. And even today, there's slavery in our world today. No country actually uh, 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 allows it officially, but it does still happen when you talk about child labor and sex slaves and forced labor, debt bondage, domestic labor. It It still happens. It's still there. But the first ideas for slavery being wrong were from the Christian faith because of Jesus' teaching. Now, Jesus challenged the institute of slavery without directly condemning it. If you look at the teachings of Jesus, he challenges it, but he doesn't actually condemn it. It wasn't until the Apostle Paul later on that he actually condemned it, but he also taught slaves and slaveholders how to get along with one another in Christ Jesus while having that liberty of Christ within them. So fast forward like 1,800 years from the time of Jesus, and then then you got France and the United States are the first countries to abolish it in their nations. And so if you think of it, uh, it was uh, 
I don't, I don't have the year for France, but I think they were the first. And then, so 1776, this is boring history for you. I get it. I see you falling asleep, and it's like hot out, whatever. Uh, 1776, America declares its independence, right? Four years later, or when was it? Uh, 17, no, not four years, seven years later. In 1783, we win the, the war, right? It took, took two years to win the war. 21 years later, then 1804, the northern states abolished slavery. It was one of the first things America dealt with when they finally became a nation. They couldn't deal with it before because they were England. England, by the way, didn't abolish it until 1833. So the first thing that they did was abolish slavery as a nation. Uh, now, then they went to war over it, we understand, in the Civil War, right? It took even longer to, to really get it abolished. Anti-slavery is a distinctly Christian Jesus philosophy that has changed the entire world because of his teaching. Again, still happens today, but nations have changed because of Jesus. The idea that human lives are not property to be owned, but rather precious children of God, that's from Jesus. And we still live this as a nation today. Whether we're a Christian nation or not, this is how we function. Here's another thing. For Jesus' time and culture and period, women were viewed as inferior. And Jesus was immersed in the patriarchal society. In fact, uh, his, his forefathers were called the patriarchs, you know, Abraham and Isaac and uh, Jacob and his brother Esau and then you got Joseph. All, all those guys were the, the patriarchs. And everything went through a male understanding of things. Abraham is 1,800 years before Jesus. America is 1,800 years after Jesus. And honestly, for that 1,800 years from the time of Jesus up till probably, you know, the 1900s, there wasn't a lot of progress for women. You know, it was just it kind of just the way it was all that time. But, but from the time of Jesus to Paul, we see the most advancement for women. Uh, they've elevated their status to be able to be leaders in churches, to plant churches, to be involved in leadership here and there. There's a few women throughout history that, that uh, play a pro prominent role. But it wasn't in America until about World War II. Well, 1920s, there's women's suffrage. And then World War II, really women went into the workforce and they never left. And, and, and so women have been able to advance their status in our culture, and it's, it's a direct teaching of Jesus that everybody is on an equal playing field. And again, whether we're not a Christian nation, we still live out these principles today. I think we can agree that there's many areas where there's a long way to go for some of these things. There's a long way. But yet, Jesus has given us a clear direction to elevate the status of women. I'm going to roll through the next few pretty quickly. In Jesus' day, the civil government was an oppressor, not a protector. Over the course of time, now America has been founded that it should be the protector of the people, not the oppressor. Again, aren't we seeing this tension now where we feel like, oh my gosh, our government is oppressing us and keeping us in our homes. Where's our liberty in that? Right? We... I, I don't know where you're at on the issue exactly, personally. But let's be honest, the tension is there. Jesus' role in that would be protector, not oppressor. He said in, uh, Paul said in Romans 13, The authorities that exist are appointed by God. He is God's minister to you for good, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. America's governmental system was to work for the good of the people, and still today, for the most part, I think it's the case, uh, the government is supposed to work for the good of the people. And that has always been the case. I look at education. Uh, Christian monks were the first to, to preserve writings, I, even non-Christian writings, even non-biblical writings. Christians were the ones to preserve it. Christians were the ones to start universities. We started the first universities in France, London, and the United States. Believe it or not, Harvard used to be Christian. <laughs> Probably say they still are. I don't know. Um, ah, the first 
printed book. What was it? The Gutenberg printing press? What was the book? The Bible. Yeah. It, it, it was the Christians who were trying to educate people. Now, there was times in our history as Christians that we tried to keep education down, too. Uh, but so there's tension on that as well. But for the most part, we are people who want and value education. Here's another one. The arts. Throughout history, the church has preserved art and created art. All the art was Christian through the Middle Ages. The music, um, uh, the, the, the statues, and the, the stained glass, and the art was all Christian. It hasn't been until recently that uh, uh, the church has fell behind on that. Business and labor. Uh, Colossians 3.13, Paul writes, working heartily unto the Lord uh, as to the Lord himself. That's a biblical concept that no matter what, we're not working for the man. We're working for the man. Okay, you've you got to see which way I'm pointing for that. We're working for Jesus, even as we do our regular life. That's a Jesus concept. Now, we're not just working for a paycheck. Now, again, those things are coming under tension now. We don't have all that like we used to. Here's another one. Extravagant generosity. America is consistently ranked as the leading giver to the world. Um, we've been given much, and so much is expected of us, and we give much. Billions and billions of dollars for aid. Um, uh, uh, up until America started doing that, very seldom was there any nation willing to give money that would be a potential rival. They weren't just giving aid to other nations. And, and we lead the world in that because of our gener. That's a Jesus thing. Um, it's a result of Jesus' influence on the lives of people and us today. Healthcare. Throughout the early years, it was the Christians who took care of people. Christians are the ones who developed the hospital. Uh, Riverside Medical Hospital, the Methodists started that. United Methodists, believe it or not, they did something good. Now they don't run it anymore. <laughs> But they were the ones who started that sort of thing. Churches have developed health care systems to provide for the most needy people, the people who are on the margins of life and can't provide for themselves. It was the Christians who reached out to them. I think America leads most of these categories still today. Everybody wants to come to America for education. A lot of people want to come to America for health care, although Americans want to go to Canada. You know, but I think that's always the case. People in Newark want to go to Zanesville. People in Zanesville come on Newark. You know, it's just the way it is. But, but so we lead the the world in healthcare, in education. Now think about other nations who were not founded on the principles of Jesus Christ like America. Just take a second and think about countries across Asia, across uh, uh, northern Central Africa, across the Middle East. They don't have a foundation in Jesus Christ. Where do they stand in, in regards to their equality of women? Where do they stand in their quality of education and allowing women especially to be educated? Where do they stand when it comes to health care? Where, where do they stand when it comes to generosity and giving to those who are down? Is their government a protector and oppressor? I'll be honest, I, I've been critical of our nation lately, even publicly to some extent. I think we live in a post-Christian society, but the foundations of Jesus Christ are here. They, they are within us. They have informed our culture to some of the deepest extent. Our foundations are good. I've heard some people say, um, well, we just need to get back to the gospel. Just need to get back to the gospel and everything's going to be okay. I think that's partially true. So long as we each individually allow the gospel to impact our lives as well. We can't just expect people to line up to our version of the gospel. Let's build our lives on the foundations of Jesus Christ. So that there is true opportunity true equality, true liberty, and justice for all.
And we're going to unpack some of those things more and more in the weeks to come. Uh, we're going to see what uh, justice means next week. We're going to actually talk more about freedom and liberty and, and how those things work together. Um, but today, let the gospel change you. And don't worry about it changing anybody else right now. Let it change you. And then maybe we can come back to unity on the foundations of who we are as people in Christ and as citizens of the United States of America. And we can stand proud and tall in that. We're going to talk about those things again next week, or actually not those things again. We'll talk about different things next week. And, uh, uh, but until then, let's just celebrate. Today's our Independence Day. Uh, we, we can't do fireworks and, and have all those things like we normally do, but we're here together as a body. We can enjoy uh, maybe a snack, a bounce house. We can enjoy uh, uh, just being together and having a celebration with one another. So I commend us to that. Let's just enjoy it today. Uh, we can work on it later. Let's pray. God, we thank you that, that you have gathered us here in your midst, that we can come and, and worship in this beautiful uh, setting in the outdoors. We thank you for the liberties that you've granted us because we simply live in this country. But we thank you that the foundations are built upon what your son, Jesus Christ, has taught us. And that, that we can recapture those things, that we can recapture uh, these ideas of, of liberty and justice for all, that those are the foundation stones upon which we stand, that our feet are on the rock of salvation in Jesus Christ, that you are our good news, you are our gospel message. We're not waiting for a government to come save us. We're not waiting for the government to fix everything. We're going to do it. We'll roll up our sleeves, and we're going to understand that you can work within us to fix those things. Help us to celebrate and enjoy these moments together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.